Have you ever met someone and they left a great first impression on you? Now, how about someone that left a not so great first impression? Believe it or not, your nonverbal cues and body language plays just as big of a role, if not a bigger role, in communicating than your actual words do. Due to my experiences serving as a Mauer County Dairy Princess and Princess K of the Milky Way finalist in the state of Minnesota, I've had a lot of experience being trained in how to have effective body language. And that is what led me to choose this project and this topic. During this presentation, I plan on sharing ways in which you can have good and effective body language, but also ways in which we showcase ineffective body language. I'll address how these nonverbal cues can play out within the professional world and affect your professional success, as well as share a research article that relates to this topic and share my own personal experiences. So what is body language? Body language is a very powerful communicator. Oftentimes we think, I'm not sending a personal message to this person as I'm talking. But regardless, you always are, because your nonverbal cues and body language always showcases some sort of message. That is why it's so hard to reverse a first impression. If you leave a great first impression, people will oftentimes associate great and positive attributes with you. Likewise, if you leave a not so good first impression, they may associate negative attributes with you. So how do we send these verbal messages, nonverbal messages? We send and receive them via facial expressions, gestures, your tone of voice, and posture. And then lastly, your body language can also help determine someone's personal, true inner feelings while they are speaking. Have you ever noticed sometime when someone was saying one thing, but that their actions weren't really matching up? That just goes to show that your nonverbal body language can show if you are truly contradicting what you are saying, and it shows your true inner feelings inside. So now what are some examples of effective body language, and how can you partake within that? For starters, there's your voice. You want to talk with a nice, smooth, clear tone of voice without any pauses or the words such as like, um, so, that can be distractive to your audience members. You also want to talk with a um, confident um, sound and volume that's not too soft or too quiet. And then next, there's appearance. Like this nice man right here, you want to dress to impress. Dress for the job you want in the professional world. How can you do this? Oftentimes, err on the side of caution when you're dressing up. Don't show too much skin and don't have clothing with stains, wrinkles, or dirt on them. And then next, you have your face and eyes. You always want to have a nice, genuine smile on your face. Look intrigued and interested and make eye contact with whoever you're talking to. And then next, you have your posture and movement. You want to stand nice, tall, and confident, but not be too stiff or too, moving around and fidgeting too much to show signs and nerves. And then lastly, you have your personal space and distance. It's, it's important to know the appropriate distance between an, an individual when talking to them in multiple different scenarios, whether it be more casual or a professional manner. And then on the flip side, we have the ineffective body language. For voice, that would be talking in a way that's sort of choppy, hard to understand and follow as an audience member. That can also oftentimes have pauses or words such as um, like, or so that can be distracting. And then also talking in a volume that's a little bit too quiet or a little bit too loud. Next for appearance, that'd be not dressing for success. That could be by showing too much skin or having clothing that has too much dirt, stains, or wrinkles on them. Your face and eyes, that'd be showing a frown on your face, not looking happy, kind of upset to be there, and not making eye contact with, whom, with whomever you're talking to. Your posture and movement, that'd be standing too stiff like a board, or also fidgeting around and looking nervous. And then lastly, your personal space and distance. That would be standing too close to someone or too far away from someone, regardless of what type of scenario you are in. So for the second part of this project, I was required to find a research article that relates to my topic that I was discussing. I found an article in a scholarly journal. The article was called Strategies and Tactics of Self-Presentation in Modern English Conser 
conversational discourse. There are two aspects that are really talked about primarily within this uh, article, and that was pre presentation and politeness. There is two types of presentation. There is direct and indirect. Your direct is more so the messages we give, what we are conscious of giving. That is the words we speak and verbal messages. Likewise, there's your indirect. That is messages we're not so conscious about giving. We don't always know we're giving. That's the messages we give off through nonverbal and um, body language. And then next we have our politeness. There's two types of politeness, negative politeness and positive politeness. Your negative politeness often is oriented towards the, towards the listener's negative face. That could be uh, asking for favors, apologizing too much, and just not sounding sincere. And then the flip side, there's positive politeness in which we seek to minimize the threat to the listener's positive face. This could be more than likely through people that are closer and more familiar with each other who are always trying to work to resolve conflict and avoid it. And then as well, um, looking to ensure that the person you are talking to always has the best light and best interest in their manner. So how does this information from the article relate to what we've learned so far in the course in this semester? Overall, the information has been very consistent as both sources provided information talking about how there's positive and negative size of body language and nonverbal cues. We also talked about how important it is to create a great first impression because oftentimes these perceptions are hard to overcome. So how does effective body language play out in the professional world? As mentioned before, body language always has communicative value, whether you think it does or not. You're always communicating something which makes it very hard to overcome a first impression that might not be so good. That's why it's incredibly important to have great body language in the professional world when you're going through an interview or something else of that sort. Actually, how we communicate is 55% just through our body language alone. Another 38% is through just the tone of our voice. And finally, only 7% is through the words we actually speak. That just goes to show that actions speak louder than words. And then as mentioned, body language is incredibly powerful and it affects your professional success. If you can leave a great body language and showcase a great first impression, you're gonna go much farther and maybe you'll get that job or that internship that you're seeking in the professional world. So from my personal experiences, as mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, I talked about being a Princess K the Milky Way finalist in the state of Minnesota. For this position, I would talk with consumers about dairy, about the dairy community all throughout the state of Minnesota. There was actually 12 of us finalists and we were told that the smallest things were going to be the biggest things within the judging process. We were t told by a speaker that came in that after only two minutes of being in an interview, the interviewer is only looking at your nonverbal cues and your body language. They're not listening to what you're saying and forming opinions on that. They're forming opinions on how you're presenting yourself. That's why it's incredibly important to always present yourself in the best light. Whether you might think someone's watching or not, someone always is watching. And that was incredibly, incredibly important when I went to the Minnesota State Fair and was able to engage with consumers from all across the country that were attending the Minnesota State Fair. I always strive to make a great first impression, make a good connection, make a, make a friendship, and create that trust and that bond when talking with them. And that is how body language was greatly impacted on that. Throughout this presentation, I hope you learned something great about body language. And I hope you learned and thought about how can I personally work to implant some of these great and effective ways within my daily life. I challenge you, take a step back, look in the mirror, and really challenge and think about that. You never know how having great effective body language will take you within the, within the professional world. Thank you for having me here today. I had a great time speaking on the importance of effective body language.